Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the third lecture of Chapter 8, and in this lecture we're going to consider two examples that we've already considered and we're going to show how they can be solved using energy methods rather than directly integrating Newton's equations. Okay, this is a problem, a projectile problem from um, chapter 5. So we have a particle of mass m. It's projected straight up from the Earth's surface with a velocity in the vertical direction, v naught. And the only force acting on it is gravity. So this is a picture that we have. And we want to compute two things. One is the maximum height reached. And the other is the speed as a function of its distance from the origin, from the ground, from z equals 0. OK. The potential energy we saw previously is mg, z minus z naught, and we're going to assume that the potential energy is zero at the origin, or at, on the ground, and so we can pick uh, z naught equals zero. Okay, well this is getting uh, the maximum height is easy because we use conservation of energy. When the particle is launched, that's when it has only kinetic energy, no potential energy, when it reaches its maximum height, it has only potential energy, no kinetic energy, and we can then solve easily for the maximum height. Now, to get the position, or z as a function of time, um, the energy at any point along the trajectory of the particle is constant. It's, it's the same. It doesn't change. 1 half mv squared plus mgz. All right. Now the energy at z equals 0 is just 1 half mv naught squared. These, these two expressions have to be equal because energy is conserved. We set them equal, and we can solve for v as a function of position. Now, Energy methods, the energy is expressed in terms of velocities and positions. And these are the relationships you can get. If you want positions as a function of time, time is, time is not explicitly in the energy relation, you're going to have to do a little integral. So we, we have the speed or velocity, magnitude. Uh, there's only one direction, so I'm being a little bit sloppy with calling velocity and speed, but... You can integrate this, and you get z, or height, as a function of time. OK. So let's turn to another example from chapter 6. This is the particle mass m moving on a sphere, or in this plane, a circle. The only the only force acting on the particle is gravity. It starts at the top. We displace it slightly, and it slides down. We take this as a coordinate system. Um, polar coordinates, r1 and theta1. So what are the questions? Well, same questions as before. We want to find the position of the particle as it leaves the sphere and the speed of the particle at the instant it leaves the sphere. So let's find the potential energy at the top point. That's just MGB. And it starts from rest, so there's no kinetic energy. And at any arbitrary point P, the potential energy is MGB, the height, B sine theta, Sorry, b sine theta is the height, b is the radius of the sphere, and 
this expression for the kinetic energy. All right, so the velocity squared as a function of theta is given by this expression, which we already derived in a more difficult way earlier on. Remember, if we want to relate it to angular velocity, v is b theta dot. All right, now, remember what we were asked. The position of the particle as it leaves the sphere and the speed of the particle at the instant it leaves the sphere. We need a condition that characterizes the particle leaving the sphere, and we're not going to get that from energy. So you saw in the previous example, we got a lot of information from energy, but one bit we did still had to integrate Newton's equations to get the height as a function of time. Here, remember that from, the, from when we considered this problem previously, the particle leaves the sphere when the normal reaction force is zero on the particle. So it, it, it isn't pressing on the sphere anymore. All right. Remember earlier on also that the expression for acceleration in the r1 theta 1 coordinates has this form. So m times acceleration is the sum of the uh, forces acting on the particle, the, the gravitational force w and the normal force. We've already worked out what these are previously. And the r1 component you easily see you get an expression for n in terms of a theta and v squared. Setting n equal to 0, we get v squared equals bg sine theta. This is the condition, this is the velocity for when, at the, at the angle for when the uh, particle leaves the sphere. So if we set this equal to the general expression for the velocity as a function of the position on the sphere. That's this. This is the condition for leaving the sphere, normal force equal to zero. And we see immediately that sine theta is two thirds. And, it, and if we use the fact that v is b theta dot, we can easily relate that to, to get the expression for the angular velocity. So if you compare with the earlier way in which we solved this problem, this was a bit easier because we had to, uh, we had this, um, we had to integrate one component of the, uh, of Newton's equations to get this relation. Here we get it completely from energy. But we still need to get, to use Newton's equations to get the condition for uh, leaving the sphere, which is the normal force equaling zero. The, the condition on forces involves Newton's equations. Okay, that's all of the main material of chapter eight, and you can see what we're gonna do in the next lecture. We're gonna talk about the problems at the end of chapter eight. So, see you next time.